Warning, the following video contains content which is inappropriate for persons under 18 years of age. This video will contain some sensitive content with the following trigger warnings. Self-harm, alcoholism, substance abuse, trauma, mental illness, sex work, domestic violence, the pandemic. This channel does not promote or encourage any illegal activities, and all content provided by this channel is meant for educational purposes only. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. And welcome to part two or the second video that I'm doing on Jirai K. So in the first part, we mainly talked about the fashion side of things, like where you can buy the clothes if you're interested in getting into this fashion, a little bit about the history and just sort of like very surface level things. But today we want to dive deeper into the dark side of Jirai K. Like Yumechi said in the last video, she considers it more of an adult fashion because of the roots of the style. But there are a lot of young people who are interested in this fashion. So it's really important that we talk about this so that there's more awareness because like I said in the last video, there's not a lot of resources in English. Yumechi slash Jessie, she lives in Japan. So she's kind of more in the know about everything that's going on over there. And Kiara also lived in Japan around 2020 when the fashion was first starting out so she does have knowledge about it as well i think anything that you get into be it like a fashion or a hobby you know learning the history behind it and everything that goes along with it it's important to be respectful of the culture so yumechi and kiara are going to do their best to explain more about the dark side of jirai k so let's go ahead and jump into the interview hello hi <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you both so much for taking the time to speak to me again about Jirai K. I know last time we covered mostly, I would say, like very surface level things, like just talking about the fashion and where to get the clothes, a little bit about the history. And we did touch on Jirai K. There is a dark side to it. We didn't really get to go into deep about it, but that is what we want to focus on today. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin, I did want to quickly share something with everyone. So a Jirai K kind of came about during the pandemic where like a lot of Japan like shut down and a lot of tourists were not allowed in Japan. So right now people are like seeing it only through the lens of Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. And social media is a lie. It always shows the best and the worst of what's happening. And so I want to just tell everyone that like what we're going to talk about today at this stage in the fashion, because it's so huge, it's everywhere. And it's not just Tokyo. Like my friend was in Nagoya recently and like saw Jedi girls there too. It's like, it's everywhere. And it's all over all the malls. It's in music. It's, it's huge. And so because people can't see how big it is, it makes it looks like it's this really small fashion where everyone is crazy or doing all this crazy night stuff that we're going to talk about. So just don't, play into stereotypes. The majority of people at this stage in the fashion aren't like this. Some people are, but not everyone is. Just like, not all Lolitas are straight edge, not all Gyaru mm. are party people, not at all emos, self-harm, and not all Jirai K people are crazy. So <laughs> just wanted to put that out there, that to take out the stereotype of everything first. And then let's talk about the dark stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well put. I think that with Jedi K, like I haven't been back to Japan since very, very early 2020 when I had to leave because the pandemic happened. At that time, Jedi was still very, very much early in its stage. And like even me, who's participating in the fashion, but in like Western communities or outside Japan, I know that I can't even see how big it is there. It's true that from an outside perspective, you are getting most of your information from Instagram or from media that you see and things like that. And for sure, it's going to portray, as you said, the good and the worst of the fashion. So you you'll see like darker things, I guess, things that are a little bit like controversial. But I think that that tends to happen a lot, especially with subcultures. You'll hear a lot about the shocking things because right. that's what gets attention. You'll sort of get this point of view to get the attention of the viewer, whether it's good or bad. And yeah, I think that it's very good to 
start this video with that in mind. <laughs> As we said in the last video, it started in Kabukicho. And if you don't know what Kabukicho is, it's basically the red light district or like the party city. <laughs> so there's a lot of bars, clubs, there's a lot of like good restaurants and some cafes. Like it's not all bad. And I think that that's one thing is like, of course, you see on the news, like, you know, person stabbed in Kabukicho and like you see all this bad stuff. Kabukicho though, as like in existence has changed a lot. And if you maybe have been to Japan before like 2012, 2013, if you were in Japan then, your Kabukicho experience would be very, very different from how it is now. I am calling it the kawaiification of Kabukicho, but I think the real word for it is gentrification. Mm. <laughs> in 2013, Japan announced that they were going to host the Olympics for 2020. And of course, Japan started like panicking. They're like, oh shit, we have this red light district and there's like, you know, the Yakuza are everywhere and like, you know, all these hosts and catch guys and like, you know, peop they wanted to appeal to foreigners and they wanted foreigners to be safe in Kabukicho because mm -hmm. until that point, it's like, it was it's pretty sketchy not gonna lie they started i think the toho cinema with the big godzilla maybe you have seen pictures of it i saw that, it in person i went in yeah. 2018 and we saw ah it's so cute <laughs> so that opened in 2015 so mm -hmm. that was part that was kind of step one of like trying to fix kabuki cho's image was making a big thing that people would want tourists would want to take pictures of like of course mm -hmm. you want to see a giant godzilla on a building and japanese people want to go see movies and you know it's they were like this will be a good thing for kabuki show and that was kind of step one and then they started adding they added an arcade which of course is going to attract younger people now we have an arcade we have a movie theater they opened a krispy kreme <laughs> so you can get donuts now and they really like went in on trying to like fix kabuki show's image because it's, it's still grungy and gross, but they're trying. <laughs> because of that, a lot of more younger people who didn't used to really go to Kabukicho because they thought it was dangerous are now like, oh, there's an arcade here. There's a movie theater. Wow, this is cool. This isn't so bad. And then you go for those things. And then you start seeing the other things like host clubs and Kabukuda and all these, you know, exciting, more adult stuff. So kind of like Vegas. I don't mm. know if you guys went to like Las Vegas in like the 90s and early 2000s when they had like all the shows and the mm -hmm. roller coasters. They kind of tried to make Ve Ve Las Vegas kid friendly. And now they're kind of doing it with Kabuki Cho, but on a different scale. So with like that also becomes the rise of the con cafe, which is like the gray area between a maid cafe and a hostess or host club, basically. It's like the middle point. These concept cafes started popping up everywhere. They were like, boom, 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 because they're a little bit more family friendly. Like the, the point is alcohol, of course, but not quite to the same degree as like a hostess, like a host club or a hostess club, slightly a bit more like level, level down from that. And they go out on the street, they're wearing like cute little costumes and they're like, yeah, come to my bar, you know? And a lot of like, younger girls wanted to work at these places because they're cute. That was kind of like the main kawaiification of Kabuki Cho. And if you go there now, it's basically exactly as I described. There's a lot more cafes now, a lot more like game centers, and they kind of hid the scarier stuff. It's it's still there, but they kind of, you know, pushed it back a little bit and mm -hmm. put more cute manga cafes and torikizokus and stuff. They fixed it. I... Wanted to also talk about, like, with this kind of rise of Kabuki Cho now being a safer town, better for younger people. I saw some people in the comments mention about it. Is the Toyoko kids or, like, runaways, mm. teen runaways, basically. If you read the manga or Tomorrow I Will Be Someone's Girlfriend, like, Yua, the character, is, like, a teenage runaway that, like, runs away to Kabuki Cho and to make her dreams come true because she doesn't have a very good family life, basically. So a lot of younger people started seeing like oh there's a lot of young people hanging out in this kabuki cho area it looks looks like you know somewhere i want to go because my life sucks at my house you know my parents don't pay any attention to me or i hate school or you know whatever kinds of reasons people have to run away and they come from all over 
Japan and they come and they live in Kabukicho and they're just like homeless young kids. Like Mm -hmm. usually between the ages of like 13 to like 20. So I actually, I'm going to bring that up later. Yeah. Like as young as like 13 and they'll like run away and they'll like live in like love hotels together and stuff or like manga cafes and places like that. And then they'll like try to get like sugar daddies or like working illegally at like certain bars or working illegally in a seedier businesses Mm. (laughs) and so and it's it's dark and sad and that's kind of where like this whole like jidai concept kind of came from essentially was like teen runaways and you know how to deal with being like a young person homeless and kabuki cho and because of that you're like you're sad and you're looking for people to love you. And Kabuki Cho is not necessarily the best place for that because a lot of the love there is artificial. It's not, it's not real. It's some host telling you you're beautiful or some host, um, some con cafe girl saying that you're the coolest guy she's ever seen. (laughs) It's not real. And that leads to a lot of like mental health problems, which leads to the whole like kind of Jedi image of popping off at any second being you know sad very soon or you know busting out getting angry about this that or the other thing yeah it makes sense I was actually having a conversation about tomorrow I'll be somebody's girlfriend because I finally like started continuing to read it because it wasn't translated into English for a while I think the person who was doing the translation had taken a leave or something and they're finally translating it so I'm like okay I'm reading it and I watched the drama in the meantime and my friend and I were discussing like you as character this character has a lot of trauma to unpack it's not just like yeah she's just mentally ill like no this character has a lot of baggage and a lot of trauma and I don't know if everyone knows this but dealing with mental health in Japan is not like everywhere else in the world especially in western countries we do tend to have a lot more accessibility to like therapy or getting a proper diagnosis to know what's going on. I think psychology is more developed in other areas of the world, whereas Mm -hmm. Japan, from what I've heard of people that live there, generally, if you have mental health issues and you go and get diagnosed, they kind of just give you medication and they're like, here, deal with it. Mm. And instead of whereas in Canada, if you have a mental health issue, usually they're not going to first prescribe you medication. They'll be like, okay, well, you should go to this therapy and try this and do this. And they're going to try to make sure that the problem gets fixed. Whereas, again, I've heard from people in Japan telling me that when you have mental health issues, they tend to just give you medication and go like, okay, go have fun, like chill. And I don't know, recently the government has kind of been like, well, our economy sucks. Drink more, please. We have alcohol available. Please help our economy by getting drunk. Like, mm. I don't know, that kind of gives you a narrative of how the country is. It's something that needs to be kept in mind when you look into Jedi culture or like the dark side of Jedi from a Western perspective. You need to understand that things are not going to be like in your country. So you can't look at it with like a biased lens of your own culture, I guess. (laughs) Looking at you as character, like, yes, she acts in certain ways and she does certain things, but it's because she has all this trauma from her home life and from things that she does and gets herself involved into. And she's very young. So it's interesting to see this character develop this way. I think that like something else to like, kind of consider is like in Japan like Sierra mentioned drinking culture is a really really big part of everything it's Mm. like you almost feel pressure to drink so much that like they sell non-alcoholic beer so you can still like drink with your boss even if you like can't drink it's everywhere and I think in a lot of Jedi K artwork you see like strong zeros which is like a nine percent alcohol in a can it's not as easy as just go get therapy especially if you're like a teenage runaway you probably don't have like all the paperwork to go and just get a therapist and so like a lot of people resort to like just partying all the time because partying is a good way to hide your emotions and if you go to Kabuki Cho next to one of the um game centers I was mentioning kind of behind the Toho cinema there's like an area that is outside of Livehouse Blaze 
it's and like um also by like a bowling alley and there's a hotel there there's like just a huge area and people go out there they sit and they drink for the entire night around like maybe 5 a.m or something they'll like go home there's a lot of police there like i'll be honest like it's like i've i've been there before not to drink but i was at the bowling alley with one of my friends and like they have a lot of police there you know they know like it's it's a problem and they also know about the teenage one runaway thing and i once saw a girl who had like a, a suitcase and the police were like interrogating her because seeing a young girl with a suitcase in kabuki chose kind of suspicious and they were like you know asking like where are you going what are you gonna what are you gonna do because it's just not a normal place to see someone with a younger girl by herself in a suitcase. The police are trying to crack down on some of the like negative stuff. It's slow, but there's a, just a lot more security and stuff everywhere now. Like all the main streets, you'll see at least like they're like stationed because they're trying to work on, like I said, with the gentrification of Kabuki Cho, they need to kind of work out on some of the crime and other kind of bad problems that are happening. One quick thing I wanted to mention was age of like adulthood in Japan got lowered. I don't know if that was like global news or not mm -hmm. but for the longest time the age of adulthood in japan was 20 once you turned 20 you were allowed you were officially an adult so you could drink alcohol which that stayed the same the age to drink alcohol is still 20 but the age to like enter like the sex industry and stuff was lowered to like 18 you can get an apartment at 18 you can get hotel rooms at 18 so like people that were considered teenage runaways before are legal adults now and that was kind of a weird shift because i'm from the u.s and like the age of like adulthood's always been kind of 18. It's kind of an interesting concept for like people who are 18 or just turned 18 during the shift. Like, whoa, I'm an adult now, but I'm 19. Is that right? I don't really know how, what I think about it because I'm like, oh, 18 is so young. But I was like, well, I was living by myself at 18. It's weird, but it is something to think about. So like where you couldn't do certain things before, you can now. Part of that is like working in bars. They don't have like the... I think it's 18 to serve, 21 to pour in America. So like you can work at a restaurant, like serve alcohol, but you're not allowed to pour it. And so it's like now, like where you were like sketchy for working in like the sex industry at 18, now it's legal to do so. So I have here listed like some things that I've read online about the bad parts of Jidai K. Like it says here, mental health issues. And then we were talking about drinking culture in japan so there's like binge drinking so is that one part of the whole thing that happens i feel like binge drinking is a big problem in jidaike but i wouldn't say it's like specific to jidaike mm. like i don't know how to put this into words but basically there's a big binge drinking problem in japan like as a whole as I mentioned earlier, like the government is literally telling people to go and drink. Mm. And because Jiraike does have a lot of people who already are very much like, yeah, let's party. Um, of course, there's going to be a lot of binge drinking there. But I think the correlation is not because you wear Jiraike, you binge drink. It's just binge drinking is a thing already. So if you wear Jiraike and you're already in that whole like, yeah, let's get... Of course, you're going to binge. I don't know. Like, that's the image I have of a lot of, like, stereotypical jidaike. This is something that happens generally in Japan. And, well, let's just do it, too. I definitely agree. Like, as some of the points that we have said, like, with the binge drinking, with mental illnesses, runaway teens, like, none of this stuff is unique to jidai. And it very much existed before jidai did. It's just that... Now, because of the internet, like these things that are happening now have like, I guess, a, a label or something that they can put it under like, oh, this is like what Jedi K is like. But no, like all this stuff was going on even before that binge drinking was a problem. Running away was a problem. Mental health, prostitution. All of these are issues before Jedi K happened. So regarding like mental illness and stuff, I read like some comments, people saying like how they would romanticize mental illness. Is that a case for some people? I think the best way to compare it to make it more understandable to people is if you were on the internet in the 2000s, 
and emo culture was rampant. Mm -hmm. I think everyone remembers how like a lot of people who or not even a lot, like some people who were into emo stuff were very much glorifying depression and self-harm. And it was like a cool thing to self-harm and people would sort of glorify that. And that sort of behavior was not rewarded, but you could show off that you self-harmed as being an emo and it was like, okay. I think the behavior here is quite similar. It's not everyone in Jirai who does that, but there are some people who do sort of romanticize mental health. However, I feel like it seems like Western communities seem to grab onto that specifically and play it up more than what Japanese Jedi communities do. Since the last video especially, I've been trying to do more research into it. Yeah, the whole thing behind like the word Jedi and having a girl who's like mentally unstable and things like that for sure is something that's happening in Japan with Jidaike but I find that a lot of western cultures are going to grab onto that specifically both the people who argue against Jidaike and people who are interested in it tend to gravitate towards that more when they come from western communities and sort of disregard everything else so yeah there are a few people who do glorify mental illness and the whole like will play up even more the whole Jedi aspect. But it's such a huge fashion trend now. Like you'll see it on the internet because it's popular and it's gonna sensationalize to show that. But it's not the norm within the Jedi community. A lot of times too, I have seen some comments of people saying that like the hashtags of Jedi is filled with like self-harm and stuff. I check the hashtag very often and I've never seen actual photos of self-harm. I've seen vent art about it and that is something that's very popular. You do see self-harm in a lot of like art but I've never seen like actual photos of self-harm on it. I only saw self-harm once and it was on a girl's private story but I've never seen it in like the Tash tags. Like it was... You know, like I said, it was like a private, like, friends only story where I saw it. She was a, a pretty popular Japanese influencer. So I'm sure quite a lot of people did see it, but it's definitely not the norm. And honestly, most of like the Jirai influencers here in Japan, a lot of them are actually like pretty normal. <laughs> I think yeah. like, they go I've met several of them and a lot of them are like, oh, I go to afternoon tea and I get my hair done and I go to a Johnny's concert. Like a lot of them are just living their best life. Isn't there an idol group where they all kind of wear Jedi? I I know somebody commented it on the video. I, I don't remember. I wish I remembered the name of the idol group, but they all dress like that. Yeah, I think I it's, there's like a million idol groups. Oh, that okay. <laughs> but there was one really popular one called Higeki no Heroin Syndrome, like Hiroshin for short. They're actually sort of what got me interested in Jiraiki more than I already was. And I think they were probably more popular overseas than in Japan because they disbanded and now their members are doing other things. But yeah, they were quite popular. I think I one of the other big ones was it wasn't an idol. Like the, it's not the group's always image, but it was probably their most popular song, and it was Shuki P by Equal Love. Mm. And the whole music video is like so at the beginning, they're in like a boy's house, and like she's wearing like kind of normal clothes. And then, like, toward the end of the video, they're all wearing like Jedi clothes dancing in his house, but they like decorated the whole house like pink. Mm. So it's kind of like the girly takeover of this boy's house. And the lyrics are very like kind of Jedi lyrics and they mention like I'm not Ryosangata or something like I'm different from other girls <laughs> or something and one of the most popular members ended up playing Yua in the Tomorrow I Will Be Someone's Girlfriend drama so that music video was I think it blew up Jedi K even more because mm -hmm. that well that particular idol is incredibly popular amongst Jedi girls and then they have a Jedi music video and 
it's it's all it's very cute like the song is adorable but yeah it's it's in music it's everywhere and then Hatsune Miku did the, like the Menhera Janaimon song I don't know if y'all have seen that around but mm-hmm. I was also yeah. and around. recently Hatsune Miku had like a figurine that came out that's like a Jirai outfit I think it's called Vampire Miku I saw Literally. that she has like a face mask and she was showing her fangs or something yeah I remember seeing that it is a very cool figure like, yeah, hmm. I don't collect figures, but I was like, yo, that one's really nice. I want it. <laughs> Watch, if we do a third video, there's going to be the Miku figure. <laughs> Your Kudomi is like escalating. Like, like, <laughs> Miku, you know, it's like, oh, I'm so bad. Kudomi. They even have, a, uh, yeah, they have a child also. Oh, they gave birth, really they kept all the blind. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I said I was just gonna buy this one and then I ended mm-hmm. up with like oh my god <laughs> oh no, I think that one of the things in this is again also kind of like Japanese culture but I think that Jirai takes a lot from it is hyper fixation mm-hmm. on something and a lot of the, nowadays it's a lot of idols a lot of Japanese idols k-pop idols visual k it's like hosts if that's your your vibe it's this like um as we mentioned like a lot of jirai cake are like kind of party people and also trying to escape negative emotions that they can't easily express through therapy or anything like that so hyper fixation is really popular and like being um like anime just something and you'll see like i i keep seeing it like girls at cafes like taking a picture of like their anime keychain and they're like oh look at him he's so cute but it's like a doll like it's like an anime figure or like they have like the big uchiwa with like their favorite like member's face or something they're like taking pictures with it it's or um like checky like the polaroid pictures Mm -hmm. that like you get at like made cafes or you can take them with like a lot of like smaller idol groups and like um band men if you're into visual k but like hyper fixation is like a huge like no no, i don't want to say problem but problem (laughs) i don't want to say problem but um uh, you know like Ryosan Gata sp- especially like I think Jirai's uh, they hyper fixate but like they're not I feel like quite so open about it but the Ryosan Gata girls they got like the huge ass like bag with like all their button pins mm-hmm. carrying like their stuffed animal of like whatever anime character they like and they get like their hair done to like match the color of like the character or um, idol that they like or whatever it's especially prevalent in Ryo Sangata Jirai a little bit I think so because they both kind of feed into each other mm-hmm. it's just one slightly pinker <laughs> <laughs> but like it's 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 nuts and I'm kind of like obsessed that with their obsession <laughs> it's very very interesting and I think that like it's a form of escapism isn't it like just mm-hmm. like alcohol Ooh. or drugs or whatever like hyper fixating on something is a way to like not focus on your problems and I that's mean, also what we're very like escapism sort of thing but as long as you're not like putting yourself into financial ruin it's almost like a more positive way to escape from problems than resorting to alcohol and drugs and like less good things I don't know I do see a lot of hyper fixations too and I'm just like oh this is so cute I love watching you being so passionate about this one thing I could sit I have a lot of friends who have hyper fixations too and I find it so interesting to like sit with them and let them talk about their passion and they're so like I don't know I find it really cute to watch and it just makes me happy to know that these girls are like super into their thing. I think like as she said as long as you're not going into financial ruin I don't really see like a problem with it and I definitely do think it's like a a more healthier way to like deal cope with problems that you have just choosing to you know I'll focus on you know this k-pop idol or something rather than focusing on the problem of course like the problem is still there but it does help a bit I think that like one of the big issues speaking of financial ruin would be going to host clubs because and you know the the topic was coming y'all knew it was coming (laughs) like Host clubs are kind of at this point in time very much frequented by like a lot of Jedi girls because hosts 
changed when Kabuki Cho changed. Hosts also used to be a lot crustier when before Kabuki Cho <laughs> became kawaii. Hosts are like their hair was like and like they had so much hairspray, like it didn't move. They were always wearing like really, really flashy suits and a lot of them like didn't really have any money. And so a lot of them went out and had to do catch themselves. So they would be like, ma'am, what are, where are you going? Oh, where are you going? Are you going to work? And like, they were everywhere because they had to appeal more to the gyaru back then. A lot of them were kind of gyaru o, So they mm. were like, you know, a little bit more like rugged looking, we'll say. And now because all the Jedi girls and Yosangata girls who are likely to frequent a host club other than kind of like older women, <laughs> it's kind of like those two demographics. It's like girls who need to hyper fixate on something and like older women who are single and, you know, they got, they need something too. And so those are kind of like the two like main host demographics, I would say. When their clientele kind of shifted from Gyaru to like, you know, cute girls who like idols, the hosts also became idols rather than being like these, you know, Gyaru O guys. So now a lot of them try to look like K-pop idols or they try to look like Japanese idols, models. So like they're a lot more pretty. So they're a bit more enticing because, you know, they're, they change their image. Now, if you walk around with a host, a lot of people probably wouldn't even know. They just think you're walking around with a hot guy. But like back in the day, if you were walking around with a host, people knew he was a host. Yeah. It was very obvious he was a host. But now it's like, oh, you know, I'm I'm just dating this really hot guy. It's so it's like it's easier to fixate on something that's like almost an obtainable idol. Like he's there and you can go and you can spend your money to be with him. And that is kind of one of the biggest problems I would say in GDI when it comes to financial ruin is it's like girls who already maybe don't have a place to live. Like they may be teen runaways. They are maybe... You have to be 18 to go into a host club, I think. And then 20 to drink. Some of them, I think, are 20 only. I think it kind of depends on the club. I'm not really too sure about that one. So, like, don't clock me. But, like, you know, now it's like, okay, it's a girl who's kind of unstable, who may or may not have a drinking problem, which is the whole, you know, you you go to a host club to drink. And mm. that's kind of the whole point. And so it's like a girl who may have a drinking problem, who maybe doesn't have a place to live. And she can dedicate her entire life to being with me because she's sad and lonely. So you go and before you know it, financial ruin. And then you're like, what do I do? I need money. So you go down the street because you're in Kabuki Cho and you're like, oh, look, a soap land. I can just work here or I'll go work at this con cafe. And then so it's like all of these girls that work at these kind of places, they get a lot of money and then they give it straight back to the host and there was like this like statistic that like i think it was 70 or like 80 percent of people who go to host clubs are other night workers yeah it's like a huge statistic of like people who go to those kind of places are working in those kind of places themselves Dang. so it's like a constant cycle then yeah it is and so like i think that that is one of the reasons why jedi may have like a sort of bad rep because it's like you're taking already kind of vulnerable emotional people and putting them in a kind of worse situation all for the sake of money and fake love on the other hand these jedi girls who are working at these nice cute con cafes and stuff are getting like mew mew bags and gucci and like all this money from like their customers and then they go to the host club and like do the same thing for them it's like they know, they know the gimmick and they still choose to participate in it for love, love. That is, I mean, a big part of you as character. Like she is stuck in this vicious circle of like, she keeps going to see this host, right? I'm not sure because I'm not there in the manga yet, but like in the drama, he's basically pimping her out to get her to come back and buy him alcohol because he wants to be the top host it's just this really really shitty vicious circle like you can't blame this girl she's really young and she probably doesn't know any better and like she just wants to be loved and mm -hmm. like clearly has all this trauma that comes from her life and this is how she's able to escape it i think it's an interesting character to look at because unfortunately this is the reality for some jedi girls and some regular girls as well it's very unfortunate and 
that's happening right now. Like, as we said, again, like this stuff existed before Jedi K happened, hyperfixation and host clubs and stuff. It's like, it's a whole thing that Japan's had for a long time. So like, I don't want to be like, oh, Jedi girls are like this. It's like anyone can be like this. (laughs) I think it's very interesting how Mm. this fashion came about during like a global crisis when people are at their lowest possible points and so like I think that that kind of brings out a lot of like the vent art and stuff is like you have a whole bunch of negative emotions you're not allowed to see your friends so we were talking about post clubs I guess something kind of related to that is you were telling me earlier about papakatsu which is kind of like sugar daddies in japan right the meaning of papakatsu is a dad activity dad activity yes yeah there's also um mama katsu which is Mm. the same thing but for uh, older women (laughs) rich rich older ladies papakatsu as you know some people may know that in jirai having a lot of excessive luxurious things seems to be prevalent a lot of like i said mew mew in particular mew mew and gucci and like the famous mcm bag like that stuff's not cheap and like as we mentioned in like the last video you don't need those things jidai is actually a very cheap fashion just because you see this you know girl with like a mew mew bag doesn't mean you need it (laughs) and honestly one thing i've always thought about like i wouldn't bring luxury goods into new orleans like if i went back to america i would bring all those nice things but if you like those things it's your money do what you want with it you know but in japan there's kind of a people don't really have cars and there's no real way to display wealth in japan a lot of people live in kind of small apartments and you know you don't really invite people into your house because it is kind of small it's not really a nice place to party you know what i mean and so the way that a lot of people display wealth here is with handbags and wearing luxury brands and because of that a lot of people think that they need these kinds of things and that's okay and with that also kind of came the birth of like papakatsu and sugar daddies basically like as we kind of mentioned with the teenage runaway is a lot of these girls who came to kabuki cho had nothing they came from maybe like the countryside of ibaraki or something came to kabuki cho with not a plan they were just like anywhere is better than my house and talk chatted with some old dude on the street who was like I'll you know give you some money would you like to go on a date with me and that sort of thing I don't know a whole lot about like the sugar daddy thing but I know that there's there's ones that you sleep with and maybe there's ones that you just go out to dinner or you know hang out with I don't really know but from what I've heard from people who on the internet or something that have had a sugar daddy, it depends on what your terms and conditions kind of are. So I think that um, this kind of way to fuel the things that you like could be through that option. And you can see this sometimes, I think, with mm-hmm. Jedi girls, a way to buy these expensive things or a way to fuel whatever your hobbies are. The more that we talk about this, it's reminding me a lot of like how Gyaru was back then. Like, you know, not all of them, but there were some girls who were involved in the like adult industry and that they would have sugar daddies the more that we talk about all this it's like kind of similar and same thing like last time we were talking about like the makeup and even the brands that mm-hmm. people buy like jirai k fashion from a lot of these brands were like yaru brands and was lisa mars <laughs> similarities between jirai k and gyaru it's insane and I think people don't realize it yet because visually they look so different, but there's so many similarities between Gyaru and Jiraike, or rather what Gyaru used to be and mm. what Jiraike is evolving into. And it's even taking up like the same space kind of as Gyaru was back in the day. Like it's still sort of low key alternative fashion because it's not like Uniqlo. But, like, it's not Harajuku fashion either, where it's, like, super over the top and a very small percentage of the population wears it. Like, it's super popular amongst people. 
but it's not like your traditional like Uniqlo style of like very mainstream fashion either and I think that that's sort of what Gyaru was back in the day where it was like technically alternative fashion but it was really really popular so a lot of people were wearing it and it was kind of common to see Gyaru in the street so I don't know I think Jiraike is sort of not taking over what Gyaru was but sort of and there's a lot of similarities like in lifestyle and certain things they do and things like that and like even misconceptions about them that mm-hmm. are sort of coming back I think so too <laughs> and especially like the hairstyles like yeah you can have kind of straight hair where maybe like a lot of the older Gyaru styles had like the big the big big hair but like going mm-hmm. to the salon just to get your hair done like for a look is still very very common with like especially the Yosangata girls like the ribbon hairstyles is kind mm-hmm. of like taking place over the Sujimori style mm-hmm. and so you know a lot of things have sort of turned into that which is that's interesting because I was Gadu, so I'm kind of like wow mm-hmm. oh, that's an interesting transition like I had blonde hair and everything <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I mean that's just kind of how it is in general with like fashion and it's always evolving earlier we kind of touched on about how did I cake kind of like slowly grew around the time of the pandemic in 2020 do you feel like that fueled the popularity of this culture definitely i think Uh, that because people were trapped in their house a lot of like um we as uh we kind of talked about earlier with like the mental illness and like um vent art and stuff Mm -hmm. like that like i feel like this is kind of around the time when a lot of the like artists like, because I feel like Jidai K has a lot to do with like illustrations and stuff. Like, there's a lot of really popular, like, G. G- eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 you said it's so much, you gotta like take a shot every time you say Jidai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so, I think that that's kind of when they started rising to popularity, like the um, being able to express Jidai K through art, because you couldn't really go out. But here's the other catcher is Kabuki Chair never really closed down. And <laughs> a lot of um bars in kabuki cho were like kind of running illegally because here's the interesting thing the government never said businesses had to close they what they did was they were like we will give you money if you do close but for certain businesses they were like oh we'll probably make more than the government will give us so might as well just stay open so the toyoko kids who had nowhere else to live were still kind of doing the same thing which was just making fuel in a huge fire of problems because even though like yeah kabukicho was open it still wasn't open it was dependent on where you were what restaurants were willing to open what bars were willing to open because a lot weren't we also sort of was like you can't really go and see your friends now because some people are more were more afraid than others and like if you were seen going out people would like ridicule you and like there was just it was a very messy situation (laughs) over here honestly and like I was shut down in my house for several months teaching from home like my job was just like okay we'll just go um we'll do it from home now so I started working from home and it was like so boring and I couldn't put on makeup and I couldn't dress up. So I can understand like why people would go she die. They kind of go crazy and you start being like you're angry and you just want to like, you know, pop off and explode at like things that you can't control. And that's the problem. You can't control the pandemic. You can't control what the government's doing. Mm-hmm. You know. So something really interesting too is I think globally mental health has shifted for a lot of people. Some people that didn't have certain issues before because of the pandemic now have them even though it's something that's fueled by the pandemic it's still mental health that's changing and that can cause certain things to happen and you did mention also something really interesting that like while Kabukicho was open you know the rest of the country like sort of wasn't and a lot of people were staying home So if the only people that are able to post on social media showing that they're going out are runaway teenagers that are living sort of problematic lives, and that's the only media you're able to get because those are the only people that are going out, for sure you're only going to really get negative media because that's the only media being produced other than artists at home that are, you know, 
also really pissed off that they're stuck at home and they're just drawing vent art. So it is very interesting that this fashion style sort of started evolving within the pandemic because you do have all these very like trapped people. Kind of again going into like the runaway thing and Kabuki Cho never actually closing. It's like if your home life is getting shittier and shittier by the day because now you're trapped with like your abusive father or you know abusive boyfriend or whatever and you're like wow Kabuki Cho's open. I can just like go run away you know. And so, like, it probably definitely escalated that, too, I think. And, like, it's a very interesting fashion that came out of, like, one of the world's most tough issues, I think. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. But Mm. there are some better things that came out of this fashion style. Yes. Um, Let's talk about this. Relating to art, there's one artist, I completely forgot her name and I feel really bad. It's like really early in the morning right now. But she like draws this one Jidaike girl. She has pink hair and she always draws her doing super wholesome things. Like it's so cute. There's this one image where she's at a restaurant and I think the waitress like spills water on her skirt. She's just like so nice about it. And like it's all these little art pieces of like this one pink haired Jidaike girl that's just super sweet and it's super wholesome well other than art you know what are some other things like positive things about jirai k that you enjoy and why you you know enjoy wearing the fashion and other people too because when i looked it up on tiktok like looking up jirai k there's so many people like so many young people wearing it and just like having fun with their friends with the fashion and stuff it's not all dark there is a dark side and i have in my notes here The quote was, you can wear the style without actively promoting harmful behaviors. You know, there's going to be some bad apples, but most of the people aren't bad apples. Yeah. Like, I see girls shopping with their mom who are like Jedi K girls. Like, and they're just like, you know, they're going to 109 and they're shopping in Aunt Rouge and mom is like, oh, do you like this? And the girl's like, yeah, I like that. And it's like, I don't think that that girl is scamming old men. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it's at this point in the fashion, I honestly think you can divide the lifestyle or the negative aspects of the lifestyle because good aspects are like afternoon tea and going to concerts. Like that's fun. <laughs> but like, I think. At this point, there's so many people who participate in it. It, You got to divide it. It's just a stereotype otherwise. And we do not do stereotypes here. But like some good things that I really like about the fashion is I found, for me, I found something that fits my two personalities. Because I always was like, I really liked Visual K. And when I was younger, I watched a lot of like horror movies with my mom. I kind of liked darker stuff. But on the other hand, I'm a huge like history buff. And so I really like very like antique things, like the cute, like pink and like the white. And like, that's why I was attracted to Lolita at the time. For me, it kind of mixed like the two hobbies that are really far apart from each other, like horror and rock music (laughs) and like I did ballet as a kid. And so I really liked like, you know, pink stuff also. And so it kind of bridged those two things for me like now it's like I can wear pink and wear black I can wear studs and garters and I can wear ribbons it was like a really good mix for me that's just it for the fashion side as for like the things like uh, the culture side a lot of the Jedi girls I've met are actually really really nice and I think that part of it is because you are so ostracized just by wearing pink and black you know like uh, those animals in the wild where you're like oh avoid that animal because they wear you know their skin is blue or whatever it's kind of like that it's like a danger sign right to to some people they're like oh avoid that girl because she's gonna pop off but when I see other Jedi girls they're usually really really nice like I you know and they compliment each other and like I don't know all the ones I've met have been really kind and nice people who are just misunderstood so I I really like Jedi for there's like a kind of family aspect to it I think people who are just misunderstood that need to come together and yeah. if it's like there's a community <laughs> aspect to it that I really like I think both for 
positive things and negative things. A lot of times I find that girls who wear jirai, they do have a lot of things in common. So you're able to connect with them on certain things. And it's nice to have that community aspect that you can just be yourself in. And same thing, like I find it marries very, very cutesy things with darker things not like by the lifestyle I mean but just like aesthetically like I'm someone who really liked like Junji Ito when I was younger and like very darkly themed things but I really liked super kawaii culture and like I wore Lolita I wore Fairy K like I was super into those kind of things but I never felt like it fit me and I didn't think it was an image that I liked like even when I wore Gyaru I didn't feel like myself I felt like I was someone else wearing a costume. And when I started wearing Jiraike, I finally felt like, oh, this style is for me. Like, this is something that I like. And when I look at myself in the mirror wearing Jiraike, like, I enjoy this. I can wear this on a daily basis and I don't feel like I'm not myself. Mm. And I think a lot of people that wear Jirai have that same feeling so it's nice to be able to connect with people that way i haven't met any in japan because as i said i left in march 2020 and like jirai had just started at that point like even i didn't really wear it at the time but the jirai girls i've met outside of japan were all super kind as well they're very nice people it's nice to like find a style that really feels like you like i can definitely relate with that in regards to like decor and stuff because yeah i i too like tried and experimented with all sorts of different styles like lolita fairy k too but it didn't really feel like me i like collecting a lot of weird things so i feel like maybe that's why i'm into decor so that's why i like it it's nice hearing that y'all found a style that feels like the most you and you managed to also find a community it's nice to hear that you've both had really positive experiences with Jirai K. As for the the negative stuff, I'm very much like a you do you, just don't hurt other people and like don't hurt yourself. Mm. So like the negative stuff, of course, like it does happen. And like I've said, it's not unique to Jirai and it didn't come because of Jirai. It, they just so happened to, you know, that was already a thing and then this happened. So I don't, want to say that like Jedi doesn't have its problems or that I approve of the bad things because like I don't approve of you know self-harm I think that people need help and I think that Japan and people should be able to express you know in healthy ways that they have these kind of pent-up emotions and stuff and I think that being mean to people just because of the clothes they wear or like like I've said a couple of times like stereotyping them it it does more harm than good Mm -hmm. and so you assuming that this girl is like this are you like bullying because you're like oh this girl has you know mental problems because she wears this fashion or like oh she's killing people she's gonna go stab her host boyfriend or like whatever Mm -hmm. it's like that's not the case and unless you know what people are really like which this is the internet you're never gonna know what people are really like unless you know them personally i want the future of the jedi community to be a positive and healing one i don't want this like negative bullshit that comes from tiktok or that comes from just assuming what people are like based on what they wear like it's not cute it's 2020 get over it people dress differently (laughs) And I also think it's important to let people know that, like, you don't need to be, like, the Jedi lifestyle to wear the fashion. This is a really hot take, but, like, I think a lot of people who live outside Japan, as I mentioned earlier, tend to cling to, like, the mental health aspect of the dark side of Jedi K and sort of play into that. And you don't need to do that to wear jiraike you can enjoy this fashion and live a positive life you don't need to be mentally unhealthy or you don't need to like glorify mental health or mental disorders to be accepted into the jirai community if you do have mental health problems like 
for sure you'll find people that you can talk to and maybe not find like help specifically, but you'll be able to find people that you can at least talk to and like have a safe space. You don't need to be mentally unhealthy to be part of the Jedi community. And I think that that's something that's important to remember. I'm glad to hear that the both of you have had like really positive experiences with Jedi K. But yeah, thank you both again for taking the time to speak to me about this i really 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 appreciate the both of you so much so thank you again thank, thank you. you for having us again yeah, <laughs> yeah this was a, a lot of fun and i liked being able to ramble a little bit i'm like an old man <laughs> <laughs> like back in my day <laughs> Thank you both again to Yumeti and Kiara for taking the time to talk to me about Jirai K. Really appreciate it. If you would like to check them out on their social media pages, they talk and share their Jirai K outfits and stuff like that. Also, I would like to say a huge thank you to my lovely patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching this video. Super appreciate if you watch this to the very end with these kinds of things it can be really hard to talk about so it's important to get an understanding about the whole picture but i hope that you have learned something from this i definitely have learned a lot from speaking to yumechi and kiara thank you thank you again and i will see y'all in the next video bye